Lorentz curve. We we'll talk few things about Lorentz curve. So the first thing is what is Lorentz curve? So it is a curve which is used to depict the distribution of income in the country. It is used to measure inequality in the country, income inequality in the country. Let's say. So what do you do? You take up the proportion of population here, cumulative proportion of population on x-axis. You take up cumulative proportion of income on y-axis, right? So if you look at this 45 degree line, what is this going to tell you? It is going to start from this point where 0% of population is earning 0% of income. I mean, it is going to end here. Where 100% of population is earning 100% of income. One thing. Second thing, if everybody would be earning same amount of income, then this is going to be the Lorentz curve. This is the line of perfect equality. How do you interpret this? 0% of population earning 0% of income. 10% of population earning 10% of income, 50% earning 50% and so on. So that is perfect equality. There is no inequality in this country. But in general, it doesn't happen like this. In general, let's say this is your Lorentz curve. So you will have the data. So you find out that 20% of the population is earning 10% of income. Is it earning 20%? No, no. So there is inequality. 50% of the population is earning just 20% of income. Is it earning 50% of income? 80% of the population is only also earning just 40% of income, not even half. So I'm just trying to give you a view that how Lorentz curve is going to show that there is inequality in this country, a lot of inequality in this country. Right? So this is the first thing. Second thing is, can Lorentz curve get flatter as we move from left to right? That is the second thing. No, Lorentz curve cannot get flatter as we move from left to right. See, it is drawn in a cumulative fashion. So when you move from 20% to 50%, so this 50% includes all the, all the preceding population and what they are earning. No, so this cannot be possible that now when you move from 20% to 50%, the share of income is going to fall. It will increase from 10% to 20%, but it can't fall below 10%, can it? No, it can't. So, one thing is, it is not going to be possible that Lorentz curve will slope downward, or Lorentz curve will have a constant slope for a very large segment of population. One thing. Second thing, Lorentz curve cannot even get flat. Uh, flat would mean what? Supposedly, it becomes flat between this and this, 50% to 80% of the population. Is it possible? That uh, 30% of the population which is lying between 50% to 80% they have not earned any income. Is that possible? So no, Lorentz curve also cannot get flat. It cannot bend downward, it cannot get flat. Right? That's the third thing. Fourth thing, the distance between the line of perfect equality and the Lorentz curve is going to measure inequality. So this distance between the line of perfect equality and the Lorentz curve that is measuring inequality what is Lorentz criteria? So suppose really I have two countries. There is country one and country two. Country one has this green Lorentz curve and country two has this uh, orange Lorentz curve. So because country two's Lorentz curve is lying everywhere to the right of country one's Lorentz curve, so inequality is more in country two. This is what Lorentz criteria is. If everywhere one Lorentz curve is lying to the right of the earlier Lorentz curve, then uh, this particular Lorentz curve which is lying to the right is showing more inequality. You can see this, here 50% of the population in country 1 is earning 15%, right? While in case of country 2, it is earning just 10%, right? So the distance between the line of perfect equality and orange Lorentz curve is more as compared to the distance between the line of perfect equality and the green Lorentz curve. Right? So this is Lorentz criteria. Now the question is, when is the Lorentz criteria consistent with the other measures of uh, inequality measurement? When it is consistent with anonymity principle, population principle, relative income principle, and Dalton's principle. So just look at the first one. If and only if it satisfies anonymity principle, population principle, and relative income principle. You remember anonymity principle now? Anonymity principle says what? It says that you are not concerned with who is earning what income. You are only concerned with the distribution of income and Lorentz curve is also telling you the same thing. So when you draw this Lorentz curve, do you know 
that what is the particular person earning what? You just know the distribution of income. So is Lorentz curve satisfying anonymity principle? Yes, it is. What is the uh, population principle? Supposedly, if the population is doubled, but the income shares remain the same, does it change anything? No, it doesn't. So in our case also, we are only concerned with the cumulative income. We are only concerned with this cumulative percentage of income. So we are not concerned with the population size. So if the income shares remain same, it satisfies population principle, no? And does it satisfy your relative income principle? Supposedly, if everyone's income is scaled up by the same amount or scaled down by the same amount, does it change income shares? No, it doesn't. So in one line, Lorentz curve is concerned with the population shares and the cumulative income shares. It is not concerned with who is earning what income. So the moment it is focusing only the income shares and the population shares, it is naturally satisfying anonymity principle, population principle and relative income principle. Right? Other thing. Is it consistent with the delta principle? Come back to this graph. You have You have this initial blue Lorentz curve. Now what happens is supposedly from the poorer section of the population, I transfer it to the richer section of the population. Uh, so from 40th percentile, I'm transferring income to the 80th percentile. So what is going to happen? Lorentz curve now will become something like this. Huh. So don't you think that the inequality has increased and this is what regressive transfers is. This is what Delta principle was also telling you that if you do a regressive transfer, if you take up income from poorer individual and you transfer it to the richer individual inequality should increase. What is happening out here is that this proportion of population is earning lesser income, right? It's like this. Huh? So you have uh, inequality which is increasing and that is what Delta principle is also telling you. Huh? So. It is satisfying Delton's principle. Then you have, is Lorentz criteria applicable in case if two Lorentz curves are going to cross? See, I can, on, I can only tell if one Lorentz curve is lying everywhere to the right of the other Lorentz curve. But in this case, up till this population, up till this population, uh, inequality was less in the orange Lorentz curve and inequality is more in the green Lorentz curve. But in case if you move beyond this, suppose if this is a 50% of the population, right? This is 50% of the population. And then you move beyond this, what happens? Inequality is more in the orange Lorentz curve and inequality is less in the uh, green Lorentz curve. You know this, huh? that Lorentz curve which is near to the line of perfect equality is showing you less inequality. So can you say which uh, Lorentz curve is showing you more inequality? You don't know. You can't say it with certainty because you can only say before this, this was less than equal. After this, this is less than equal. So that is not an answer. So Lorentz curve, Lorentz criteria is not applicable if two Lorentz curves are going to cross, right? So these are the things which I want to discuss in this particular class. Thank you very much.